Hey folks, I'm John P. The Samsung Galaxy S5 and the Gear Fit are the best mobile combination on the market today. And I'm going to tell you why. Welcome to Geek Geek. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Audible. Happy birthday to Cameron from Updesk. Callie and I can't wait to meet him face to face in less than a week. You'll remember Updesk as the cool company supplying the geek house with all our new sit stand desks. You can help out too by becoming a patron at geekbeat.tv forward slash patrons or tagging the wall at the geek house on geekbeat.tv forward slash fundraiser. Every dollar helps feed a starving adult. Dave. Anyway, on today's show, I'm going to convince you that the Samsung Galaxy S5 is the best phone out there right now, and I'm going to tell you how I've been using it with the Galaxy Gear 2 and Gear Fit plus a heart rate monitor. So let's get to it. The Samsung Galaxy S5. If you haven't noticed, we've taken this one handheld. We're going to show you lots of close-up details, and I'm going to give you examples of how I've been using this phone because I do believe right now this is the best phone that you can get, especially if you pair it up with something like the Gear Fit or the Gear 2 watch. So let's get right into it. First of all, on with the uh, Samsung phone here. I've got my cheat sheet, so forgive me as I glance away for notes here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to point out to you is normally the phone comes with a plain back. And this is, by the way, one of the features that we'll get to in a second. But the, the phone came with this back, and they offer an optional, what they call the S-View cover. It's kind of padded. It's a little bit squishy, and uh, it's nice. It has, as you can see, a screen on the front, a clear area here. Then on the back, it's got uh, cutouts for the camera and a little speaker cutout. Um, what's so interesting about this is that the case itself will do a few things. First of all, with just the normal back on, if you look really close here, you're going to see there's kind of a little rubber ridge that goes around it. That's because the, cam the phone itself is IP67 uh, waterproof. Now, they're not going to tell you it's waterproof. What they're going to say is it's water resistant. But really what that means is you can submerge it in a meter of water for up to half an hour. That's waterproof, folks. I mean, if you jump in the pool with it or something like that, you can take a shower with this phone. You're not going to damage it. So that is what helps that happen. Now, this case actually pops on, and you'll notice it also has that same little ridge around it. Um, when you put it on the phone, you snap it on, and what I found to be very interesting, I have no idea how it works, but when it was snapped on, I had left a little gap, like right there, the first time I did it, and when I turned the phone on, it basically told me, I don't, I don't think I can get it to do it again right now, but it told me, you don't have it entirely snapped in place. I have no idea how it knew that, but... That is pretty intelligent, and to be able to have a really cool case that's waterproof is fantastic. One other point I'd like to make before we move on is that you will notice this case doesn't have any, but this case has a couple of little metal pins here that coincide with some of these little pins in here. I assume this is how it knew whether it was sealed properly, but what I also know is there are extra pins in here for the charging case, the wireless Qi charging version of this. So you can get this back just the way it is, or you can pay a little extra, which I highly recommend. It'll come with the coils in here, and when you snap this thing on, what it will do is you can use a Qi wireless charger and charge this thing. That's another feature of this phone, wireless charging. Whether you use this kind of cover or this one, either way, you can wirelessly charge this phone, which is fantastic and I highly recommend it. Now right now, you'll see another benefit to this case. The, the screen is lighting up there on the outside and you can do several things. First of all, it's telling me the weather. You can customize this background. It's telling me that I have a couple of emails waiting for me and if I swipe that way, we'd get the email or the camera, if I go like this and swipe this way, it's gonna give me a little camera view. 
And so what we can do is I can take a picture like that. And now we've got uh, the ability to see that image. And it's actually a little two inch square image. When I open this thing up, you'll see it's still, it's literally like a little Instagram photo, okay? So it's kind of cool uh, to be able to just walk around and, you know, snap that thing and you're done. Okay, moving on, let's talk about the camera because you guys know I'm a photographer. This is one of the things I really, really love about this particular phone. It has a 16 megapixel rear-facing camera. It's a fantastic high-resolution camera built into this thing. And it also has a two megapixel tiny little front-facing camera that happens to also be wide angle. So one thing you might notice, let's say you wanted to do a Skype call or some kind of video call on the phone. If you turn it this way, a lot of phones, you'd barely be able to get your face in there. But with this one, from about here, I could have another person beside me and easily from this distance, we'd get both of us, which is fantastic for a 1080p full video camera. The screen itself is also 1080p resolution and it's very high pixel density. So it's incredibly clear. It's 5.1 inch AMOLED. Now, those screens are very energy efficient and they're also, they look really great. So let's talk about energy efficiency for a moment. You remember, I was able to pop the back off of this thing and it's got a big 2800 milliamp hour battery built into it. That means we can change out the battery. So you could carry a spare extra battery with you or you could even buy an aftermarket extra large battery and then they make a little back that goes over it so that you can really carry a lot of battery with you, which is not something you can do with like an iPhone. You could, sure, you can use external adapters, but you can't just take it all built in with you. So that's one thing I really value on these. Now, if you found yourself in a situation where you were running out of battery power very quickly. What we can do is this. Um, I've got my desktop organized the way I like it. I've got a little folder here for tools and I'll go into settings and we can move down here to, let me see, it's harder to look at when you're not um, doing it. Power saving mode. Okay, there is a mode here. Now this is a crazy mode, but it's called ultra power saving. And what it basically says is if we turn this on, it's going to change the, uh, uh, change the color of the screen to grayscale, restrict all kinds of battery use of, uh, I mean, usage of the device, etc. And you can see my 45% of remaining battery would then last for 5.6 days. Now it's gonna last on standby, but the point of this story is if you really need to get extreme battery life out of it, you can do that. And with a fully charged battery here, I mean, you could go for like well over a week on standby using it only sporadically. That's really cool. So I enjoy that. All right, let's see, what else do I need to tell you about? Fast focus and selective focus. Let's look at the camera app because I really, really love the camera app. There are some interesting things here. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna turn it this way. So. Um, we've got a settings menu right here, and if I click on the settings, you see it brings up all kinds of different stuff we can do. First thing you're going to notice right down here in this corner, we've got HDR turned on. And I'm going to turn that off, and when I turn it off, it enables some of these other things. I'll turn it back on and watch like video stabilization. It goes gray. You can't do that. What it's telling you is, we can actually shoot real-time video in HDR mode, or we can turn that off and we can get video stabilization. Now, one other thing I really love speaking of video is the video size. Right now, it's set for 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080, but watch this. We can choose UHD, that's 4K video there, my friends. Now, when it does it, you can't do some other stuff. You can't do HDR and things like that, but who cares? You can shoot full 4K video. That is really impressive stuff. Now, you'll also notice, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna, let's get out of that. Um, we can do focusing very rapidly by just tapping on something and bang. You see how quickly it goes green? 
it's taking these pictures too. And so it focuses extremely quickly. And then we have the option to even go in and do something fun where you do selective focus. Now, the way this works is you choose something. I don't know if I can operate this. Uh, let's see if we can do it like this. You choose something like me close up with something behind. And when you hit the selective focus button like to take a picture, it gives you kind of a, uh, a bokeh effect, like where the front part of the image is in focus and the back is kind of blurred out. So it, it makes it a really nice um, artistic effect. Oh, well, that's not a very good uh, view. But you can see I'm in crystal clear uh, focus here, and this is kind of blurred out back here. That's what you want with a high-end DSLR or something like that. So lots of amazing photo and video capabilities. All right, on top of that, we're going to get into something else that's very important and leads us into the next piece here that we're going to go to. Uh, we've got the S Health app. Now, normally I would not be showing you all kinds of different apps, but this one is Samsung's specific app that's designed to do things with this camera. For example, heart rate. So there is an actual heart rate monitor, and you see it says place your finger on the sensor. What it wants me to do is it wants me to put my finger back here. And I don't know if you can see that kind of lighting up red, but it's doing that. And then this is going to measure, trying to keep still and quiet. Mm, let's see. Apparently I'm not still or quiet enough for it, but this is one of the things I don't like about this too much. Even when it works, it only you have to hold your finger in place and get uh, the, the heart rate, which is not really that useful, and so I don't use it for that purpose. But what we will do is we will look at a different app that I really enjoy. So if we go back to the main screen here, under exercise, we've got some different options, one of which is walking. I use this every single day, and we can go up here and we can see the history of what I have done in previous days. So for example, uh, let's go take a look at this day. On this day, I burned 245 calories. I walked 2.98 miles, and I can hit this little button for the map, and it actually shows you a little map of where I walked, and if we zoom in on it enough, you can see that it's color-coded, and the colors tell you the speed. So sometimes I was going slower or faster. My highest on that day was 4.4 miles an hour. So I walked three miles, burned 245 calories, average speed of 3.2 miles per hour. This is really cool. And the reason why I'm getting this is because it's also showing my average heart rate of 115 beats per minute. And the maximum heart rate, guess what? That was not done with the little fingertip monitor. It was done with this, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So I guess we're gonna stop now because I think I've provided tons of reasons why this is a great, great phone slash camera slash exercise device. It's one thing that you can carry with you anywhere. You can carry it in the rain. You could drop it in a pool. It doesn't matter. And it will interface with other devices. So I really enjoy it. Um, the last little thing I'll tell you is it also has a micro SD slot, so you can load all your music on there and it will play that music for you as you are going through your workout. Okay, we're gonna set that aside and now I wanna point out to you this brand new Galaxy Gear 2 watch. Okay, this watch is a companion device. It is not something I would recommend you necessarily buy if you don't have a Samsung Galaxy device like a phone or a tablet of some sort because this will work with the other Samsung devices and that's it. 17 different Samsung models of phones and tablets will integrate with this, nothing else. Now, having said that, what does it do? First of all, it is a watch. It is a smart watch. It does a lot of things. It has a beautiful band. I'm going to show you in a second. This little device that's clamped on the back is how it charges. So it pulls off, and you notice there's some little pins, tiny little pins on there, and there's some little pins on the back. 
So it doesn't plug the USB directly into it to charge because if it did, you'd have a big USB opening, which would be not very waterproof, I guess. So instead, there's a USB plug right here. This snaps on the back, bingo, bango, that's how you charge it. Now let's take a look at this um, uh, latch. I really like the way this works because you can adjust it extremely easily. We pull this forward and you'll notice there's kind of a little pin right there. You line it up with one of the holes, you snap it into the hole, you stick this thing on your wrist, and that's it. Very, very comfortable, okay? Um, I'm gonna take this other one off for a second. It's a stylish looking watch. It's not too big or fat. In fact, it's almost identical to the size of the Pebble, which is weird because when I look at it with the Pebble, when, I, when they're not both on me, I think it looks a little bigger, but it's almost identical. Now, it does have a big, beautiful color screen, and to activate it, there's two ways you can activate it. First of all, um, there's a mode where when you just lift your wrist up to look, at, to look at it, it turns on. The other way is to push this power button. Okay, so um, to navigate through it, you just simply swipe through, and there are different options. Now, you can hide some of these apps. You can move them around, but what I've got is I've got my pedometer on here, and so if you tap it, it's going to keep track of how many steps you've taken that day. Now, I haven't been wearing this one today, but it's been moving around a little bit, so it's got some steps. And then we could also look back at a history. We can set goals and things of that nature. To go back, you swipe down, and it just takes us back through the memory. You can also do a heart rate monitor thing on this one, but the way this one works is you just hit Start, and you make sure it's on your wrist properly, and then, you know, let it do its thing. Now, it's got a little sensor on the back that's reading your heart rate kind of through the skin. This may or may not work with it on here while I talk. Ah, now, when you're talking, these things don't tend to work very well. Now, one other feature this has is right up front, there is a camera. So, uh, the, the big question is, is this camera um, useful? Is it not useful? It's hard to say, but what I can tell you is it does take pictures, okay? So I'm gonna take a picture right now. I've got it lined up. I tap the front, bingo, it took the picture. So I'll show you that uh, here in a second. But with the, uh, with the, with the uh, camera in place, you can do a widescreen version or a full screen version and it takes these images and sends them right to your phone. That camera is two megapixels, by the way. Okay, one other thing that this will do is show you notifications. And when I say notifications, it's gonna give them to you basically on everything. Calls, emails, tweets, basically anything that your phone would normally vibrate on, it's gonna send here so you can get them on this, which means if you're like me and you get tons and tons of notifications, you'll run down the battery quicker. But even for me, this will last two to three days of heavy usage before charging. So that means you probably wanna charge it every night, but if you forget one night, not a big deal, it's gonna keep going for you. By the way, if you're gonna be running around doing all kinds of exercise and stuff, you might want to listen to some Audible books while you do it. Maybe check out Muscle Myths by Michael Matthews. Heck, just saying that'll give your tongue a workout. Or Fitness Confidential by Vinny Tor Torchio Torich. I can't say his last name. Either way, you can get it free by visiting audiblepodcast.com forward slash geekbeat. Okay, now back to the gear fit. <laughs> um, now this one is basically the little brother to the gear two. And really the difference is the screen. You'll notice this is a much slimmer screen in terms of uh, width. However, it's also kind of taller. So I'm gonna light both of these up here just so you can see the difference. Uh, um, probably, probably easier if we turn it right side up, but you can see the difference there. Now, this, can, this watch does not have a camera on it, but it does have some other unique features. First of all, you notice it's got an orientation like this. That's so that when I hold my arm up, like this, I can see it very easily. If we don't wanna have it in that orientation, we can change it. So again, I told you before, these things have notifications. Well, here you go. I've got email, or those are probably text messages, Hootsuite messages, 
group me messages, weather updates, missed calls, and then I can delete them selectively. So for example, the weather here, you click on that, uh, the weather in Dallas right there, it's raining, I guess. So we can delete that, one item will be deleted. It's only deleted from here. Um, we can check and see what these uh, Hootsuite messages are. Now in this orientation, it's a little weird reading it like that. So what we can do is, uh, let's go back and we'll go to the settings here and we can go to display where we tell it things like, for example, which wrist is it worn on? For me, it's my left. Um, and for example, do we, want, oops, do we want to rotate the screen? Now we'll change it to horizontal and bang. Now it's gonna be reading like this. We can change the brightness. There's lots of different functionality here. Okay, Bluetooth, etc. Now we can also do something else I like. Again, the heart rate works the same way. I, I don't know if we can get it to work right now. We'll try, let it measure. It, this one's a little tighter on my wrist. It may be bothered by the fact that I'm talking. Oh, there we go, 73. So finally we got a measurement out of one of these things. Um, we can also, but it's not a real time measure, so it's not gonna do a good job um, for example, when, when you're walking. But uh, we can go to, oh, let's see, where is it? Pedometer. And this is going to be recording how many steps I've taken today. So you get kind of your Fitbit functionality built into this thing. You can set goals and everything else. Now, one other thing that you can do, but I don't do with this is the exercise stuff. Remember I showed you in the phone the walking app. Well, here we've got walking capability. In fact, I had apparently stopped it somewhere where I had been walking for a little bit and went half a mile. It tells me I'd burned 40 calories. But this is one of my biggest critiques of this system. This app running on my wrist does not really communicate with the app in here. So, where I showed you that I'll wear a heart rate monitor and it will map me as I go doing my exercises and walks, what I really want is to be able to stick this in a pocket and glance here and see my timer and see my steps and calories and things right here. I want this to be in communication with each other while this is also being in communication and that doesn't work. It's one or the other. If we start our exercises here, this is tracking it, but it doesn't do a good job with the heart rate monitor. And if we started here so we can use a heart rate monitor, well, we can't keep progress here. So that, that's something you guys need to work on over at Samsung, even though I love everything. Okay, uh, what else? That's, that's really the basics of, of all the stuff getting around here. Now keep in mind, you can change the, the way the clock works face works here so we can get different stuff. You'll see that on mine I'm showing the weather. Um, we could have that be the pedometer steps or we can change up the way this looks with a different watch face etc. This is the way I like it. You can customize that. You can even customize the straps. You can put a different color on if you want. Um, so let's move on to the last little piece which is the chest strap for the heart rate monitor. Samsung doesn't make one of these. So you need to get one that's compatible with it. And I have chosen this Garmin unit. Now this, there are two different straps that will work with it. This is the one that's called the Premium Soft Chest Strap. I got it at REI for 70 bucks, but you can actually get it at Amazon for like 46. Who knew? Okay, so what happens is I'll wear this. In fact, right now I have a chest uh, strap on. You can't really see it very well, but um, under here, you wear it across your chest you get it a little bit wet. You put some water right here and on the back of this, you strap it on and after you sync it up for the first time with this, every time you put it on and you fire up that app, it automatically looks for it and it just starts working. Now the first time I went to use this strap with this thing, I had some kind of problem getting it to sync. I can't remember what it was. It obviously wasn't too hard because I got it working, but it did have a little bit of a challenge, and then after that, never, never a problem again. So I highly recommend using this strap with this phone with 
this gear fit. This one wins for me, although I wear this one when I'm going out dressed up a little bit nicer. So that's it. That's a lot of information. Sorry it was so long, guys, but I hope that was everything you wanted to know about how all these things work. If you have other questions, please drop them in the you know, comments below and, uh, or tweet me at John Pose. I'll tell you anything that you want to know about this stuff. Highly recommend it. In fact, I don't think I've ever recommended a phone or a phone watch combination like this ever before. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for even more stuff coming at you from GeekBeat. Go over to youtube.com forward slash GeekBeatTV. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. Time for me to go work out. See you guys.